The reputation of the Tiger tank is a formidable one, and many consider it to be the most notorious and certainly one of the greatest tanks deployed in the Second World War. Some even go as far as to say it was one of the best tanks ever built. Each year tens of thousands of people flock to the Tank Museum in Bovington in England to see the last remaining running Tiger 1, Tiger 131. There's been lots said about the formidable nature of the Tiger, and I'm sure you've heard stories about it blasting through dozens of T-34s or Shermans. However, in this video, we're going to have a brief look at the Tiger and consider whether it is a good tank or not. Once again, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Tiger 1 or Panzerkampfwagen 6 Tiger aus V operated from 1942 in Africa and Europe during the Second World War. Prototypes of this vehicle were presented and demonstrated to Hitler at his Rastenberg headquarters, the Wolf's Lair. Porsche and Henschel initially both submitted prototypes, but it was decided to go with the Henschel design. Porsche would later use these hulls that they had already confidently built to convert them into the Elephant or the Ferdinand tank. The Tiger that was made would go on to strike terror in the hearts of Allied tank crews, and many would fear encountering a Tiger. One of the reasons it was so feared was due to the armament and gun on board the vehicle. A 56 calibre long, 88mm KWK 36 gun was chosen for the Tiger. When you compare this to the weapon which was on board British cruiser tanks, Valentine tanks or Stuarts, there was simply no comparison. In fact, even when compared to a Sherman, the cannon is huge and extremely powerful. A combination of a flat trajectory from the high muzzle velocity gun and precision given from the sights and optics made this weapon very accurate. The Tiger's gun also had superior penetration to the 75mm KWK 40 gun found on a Stug 3 in the Panzer IV, however was considered inferior to the gun on the Panther tank under ranges of 2,500m. However, at greater ranges, the Tiger's armament was superior in its penetration and accuracy. This made the Tiger rather superior with regards to taking out enemy tanks at a distance. Soviet testing conducted determined that the Tiger's gun could pierce through the front hull of a T-34-76 from 1,500 meters, and also the T-34-85 could be penetrated from a distance of between 100 and 1,400 meters away. It's clear that the weapon was possibly the main reason why it was so feared. Another reason they're considered superior is the armour on board. The Tiger had frontal hull armour 100mm thick, frontal turret armour of 100mm thick, and 120mm thick gun mantler armour. The side hull plates were slightly thinner at 60mm, as was the 80mm armour on the side of the superstructure and at the rear. The armour plates were mostly flat in places, and the joints were of high quality being stepped and welded rather than riveted. Now the armour on board the Tiger was much more superior to the tanks that the Tiger would face in Africa, but it's considered also to be a weakness of the vehicle. At this time, the Russians were working on the T-34, which featured sloped armour. This helped to defend the vehicle as it could deflect shots off a little bit more easier. Initially, when it arrived on the battlefield, it was pretty much invulnerable and could knock out any Allied tank easily, but as the war progressed, this did change. Reports produced documented that the Sherman with its 76mm upgraded gun could penetrate the Tiger's driver's front plate, it could also penetrate the turret front from 700m. The M3 90mm cannon, used as a towed anti-tank or aircraft gun, could also penetrate the Tiger's front plate at a range of 1000m using standard ammunition, as could the M26 Pershing. Interestingly, also the T-34-85 was proven to having been able to penetrate the front of a Tiger from over a thousand metres, but of course this vehicle as with the other Allied vehicles mentioned came at the latter part of the conflict. The engine on the Tiger has attracted some criticism too, as some consider it to be underpowered. The rear of the tank held an engine compartment that was next to two separate rear compartments containing a fuel tank and a radiator. At the time, the Germans hadn't developed a sufficient diesel engine, so a petrol or gasoline one was used. The original engine was a 12-cylinder Maybach HL210 P45 engine, which gave out around 650 brake horsepower. Although this was a good engine, it was considered very underpowered for the Tiger. After the 251st Tiger, it was replaced by an upgraded engine which gave out 700 horsepower. The engine was comparable in speed to other German tanks at the time, but it was still much slower than many of its adversaries such as the T-34. It had a rather high fuel consumption rate, 
which caused the tank to have a rather limited range and refuelling stops had to be more frequent, especially when travelling off-road. The Germans expected the vehicle to be able to travel over 120 miles on road, but less than 70 miles off-road. The engine also affected the speed of the vehicle, with a maximum road speed of just over 28 miles per hour and a cross-country speed of around 12 to 16 miles per hour. The armour and armament on board would bring the Tiger to weigh well over 50 tonnes, causing fuel consumption to be very poor, as well as putting strain on the underpowered engine. Because of the weight, there were also issues with the Tiger being unable to cross small bridges. It was originally designed to be able to ford deep water, but later models could only ford water up to 2 metres, with the removal of the deep fording system. The suspension on board used 15 torsion bars with 8 suspension arms each side. The road wheels were overlapping and interleaved, and this is a point of contention. Should there be an issue with one of these, you would need to take off several of the wheels to get at the ones which were behind. Removing an inner wheel that had lost its solid rubber tyre, for example, which was common, led to engineers needing to take off at least 9 wheels first. During the rainy seasons and winter conditions on the Eastern Front, this would cause havoc, as the road wheels could become packed with mud or snow, and this could then freeze. This would be a rather time-consuming job to unfreeze the wheels, and get the tank moving again. To support the Tiger's rather large weight, the tracks were 725mm wide. This was a small issue when transporting the vehicle by rail, as narrow transport tracks needed to be put on the Tiger. This took around 30 minutes to do each side of the tank, which isn't too bad, but regularly the tanks were transported by rail, with their combat tracks on, as long as the train crew knew that there were no tunnels or obstructions on the route, even though this practice was discouraged. Now one of the big criticisms of the Tiger is the cost in which a vehicle could be made at. Its production required considerable resources with regards to the materials, and also the manpower needed to assemble the vehicle. This led to the Tiger being very expensive to produce. It cost roughly twice as much as a Panzer IV, and four times more than a Stug III. Because of this, only 1,347 Tiger ones were built, and this financial issue carried on with the production of the Tiger II, or King Tiger. During the Second World War, there's the idea that war was won by the side that fielded alright tanks in large numbers. This is perpetuated by the fact that numbers of T-34s or M4 Shermans which were manufactured is in the dozens of tens of thousands, dwarfing the Tiger's 1300. Another criticism linked to this is the fact that it's considered to be over-engineered to the point where it took too long to get out of the factory. If you compare the welding on a Tiger, or any other German tank in fact, to that of a T-34's welding, you'll see what I mean. The engineers making the T-34 wanted to get that vehicle out of the factory as quick as they could, so it could go on and contribute to turning the tide of the war. This is directly contrasted with the German engineers, who seem to take an age on their work. The Russians and Americans, in fact, seemed to have the right idea when it came to mass production, to get these integral weapons of war onto the battlefield, fighting the enemies as quickly as they could. What cannot be disputed, however, is the fact that even though it was produced in a low number, it did have a large impact in terms of the war. The Tiger family of tanks, including the King Tiger, destroyed at least 10,000 enemy tanks and 11,000 anti-tank guns and artillery pieces. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm sure you've heard stories of Tigers defeating dozens of enemy vehicles, and some of these true stories are down to the excellent crews on board, and gave birth to the idea of a Panzer Ace or a Tiger Ace, these being a group of skilled German commanders. The Tiger did have a formidable reputation due to the nature of its armour and its gun, and in the right hands it was really a deadly weapon, but these crews needed excellent training. If not, it would be a huge waste of money to give an inexperienced crew a Tiger, and this is what sometimes happened. The Tiger tank was vulnerable from the flanks and the rear, and they were able to be defeated by the Allied faster tanks, being able to flank the vehicle and get shots into the rear of the tank. However, is the Tiger a good tank? Well, before we reach a conclusion, it's fair to say we must comment on the idea of Nazi propaganda that surrounds the vehicle. Its reputation is undoubtedly skewed, due to the propaganda that has arisen of it being completely infallible, and this simply wasn't the case. No tank in the Second World War was completely indestructible, but overall, we're going to say that the Tiger was a good tank. Yes, the weapon on board was rather long when travelling in the tight lanes of Normandy, but it was a fantastic armament that was superior to anything when it first entered the conflict in 1942. 
Its armour wasn't the thickest seen during the conflict, but it was again superior to anything when it first entered the conflict. There are negatives also such as the reliability, cost and sheer speed of manufacture, but it's an iconic vehicle of the Second World War. It was the killer of thousands of allied vehicles and maintained an excellent kill to death ratio, and today, still hundreds of thousands of people flock to learn about the lore, the legacy and the myths of the Tiger Tank. Once again thanks for watching, to support our channel please make sure to subscribe. Once again thank you for watching.